So starting pathology of the GI tract, we're going to start with diverticula. So a diverticulum in general is an outpouching of the GI tract, and it can be caused by a high intraluminal pressure. So you can see there's all these layers of the gut wall that we talked about. We started with the mucosa, submucosa, muscularis externa, and then serosa slash adventitia. And here, normally it's a nice little circle, but here you get a little outpouching. That's because of that high intraluminal pressure, push, 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 outpouching. And we could divide these into true and false diverticula. A true diverticula is outpouching of all the layers of that gut wall. While a false diverticula, as you can see, the muscular, muscularis external layer is not involved. What happens, you get an outpouching in that submucosa and the mucosa through a defect or a weakness in that muscular layer. And usually most commonly occurs where the vasa recta will penetrate the muscularis externa, and this is the area where the muscularis externa is weak. So, true diverticula, the main one we're going to talk about is mecho diverticula, and we're going to talk about that in a little bit. The rest are going to be false diverticula. So without further ado, uh, diverticulosis. So losis means just a problem, right? So it's a problem with, with diverticula, it means having many false diverticula in the colon, and especially in the sigmoid colon, which is on the left side. And this is very common, especially the older you get. Okay, because and it's associated with constipation and obesity. And why would that be? Well, the key thing was increased intraluminal pressure, and both constipation and obesity increase luminal pressure. So you get more and more of these outpouchings, and usually these are asymptomatic. But you can have complications such as diverticulitis or bleeding, because there are blood vessels in here, and they can rupture and you get bleeding. And diverticulitis means inflammation. We're going to talk about that right now. But again, usually diverticulosis, older patients associated with uh, high intraluminal pressure, usually asymptomatic because they're just outpouchings, nothing's, going, nothing's happening there. But they can get inflamed, diverticulitis, inflammation of diverticula. And so you're going to get infection, it's inflammation, it's, it's due to infection because maybe you get some poop here, staying here, and then it just infects it. So you're going to just get classic infection symptoms. You're going to get left lower quadrant pain because that's where most commonly we get diverticula in the sigmoid colon. And then you can also get some complications. So that infection can, inflammation can spread to the peritoneum, which is that bag of tissue surrounding the gut. Or you can get fistulas, inflammation, you get erosions, you get a little fistula, which is connection between this, this small intestine and other things, maybe even your, your bladder, your rectum, things like that. So next is, we finished the diverticulitis, diverticulosis, we're going to go to the Zenker diverticulum. Now this is in the esophagus, before we're talking about in the colon, now we're talking about the esophagus. This is the same thing, and actually this is a nice little picture here, this is the, the diverticula right here. You can see it. That's the outpouching. And it results from this esophageal dysmotility, again in older patients, again this is older patients, Esophageal dysmotility means you get increased pressure inside the esophagus because food's getting, um, it's not getting propelled down to the stomach as easily. And you're going to get outpouching in the Killian Triangle, which I have pointed out right here. It's basically, uh, it's an area between two, two of the muscles, the thyropharyngeal and the cricopharyngeal muscles. These are the two muscles. And as you can see, it's the area between them, so it's a little weaker. And you get outpouching. And how they're gonna present with this, they're gonna have trouble swallowing, and food is gonna get stuck in that little outpouching. And if the food gets stuck in there, it's gonna start rotting, and then so you're gonna get foul mouth, foul breath, and gurgling. So again, as an older patient, esophageal dysmotility leading to higher in intraluminal pressures. Um, it's gonna happen in the Killian triangle, food gets stuck there, uh, you get you have trouble swallowing, again it's just stuck getting stuck. Uh, food gets stuck, you get foul breath and you get gurgling. Finally, we have mechal diverticulum. Remember, that is the only true diverticulum that we're going to talk about, really. Um, you can see this in the vitellin duct abnormalities in the, uh, the pediatric section at the very end. So that's it for our diverticulum.